Why isn't it cold in an igloo? When you see an ice house, you imagine it would be very cold. Nothing is further from the truth. The secret is not the ice, but the air contained in the blocks of ice. We all know igloos, the typical buildings made by the Inuit, the inhabitants of the Arctic area. But first, let's just set something straight. In the Inuit language, the word igloo means house, not ice house. So for them, it's a word that refers to all types of houses, even those made of wood or stone. Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers, manually translated into English, but, but, dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. And they are not even their real homes where they live for the majority of the time. They were actually first built as, as temporary shelters to help them survive during the hunting season when they were away from their villages. If we were to find ourselves in the Arctic cold of the North Pole, constructing a shelter from the cold and wind would be crucial. In this regard, an ice house would not just offer protection, it would also have the advantage of being a thermally insulated container due to the air present in the snow as I previously mentioned. Air is indeed an excellent thermal insulator. Conceptually, it's the same principle as double glazing. So, interesting digression, double glazing thermally insulates because there is air between the two glass panes and in high quality double glazing there is argon which is a noble gas that insulates even better than air. Let's get back to it. Having just two people inside the igloo would be enough to ensure a temperature of about 15 degrees thanks to the heat which is naturally given off by their bodies. And 15 degrees compared to the sub-zero temperatures outside is a pretty impressive upgrade. In this scenario, the more the merrier rule holds true, which is why the Inuit live in larger groups. But let's pretend we're in a situation in which we need to build one. Let's see how it is done. First of all, as I said earlier, it would be better not to do it alone because it's not an easy task. It can take many hours to build one under conditions that are certainly not easy. We have to choose an area of well-compacted snow to build it on or, if necessary, we can compact the snow ourselves by jumping or walking on it. That done, we can start cutting the bricks. I'm taking it for granted that we have good work tools, like a pickaxe, an ice knife, and even a trowel with us. Otherwise, we'll be in trouble. We'll start by digging a ditch and obtaining the first bricks from inside the perimeter of the igloo. These bricks should be quite large, let's say 90 by 40 by 20 centimeters. Next, shaping the walls of the igloo as we go using a knife, we'll create a slight slope at the top of the brick rows to form a dome-like structure. Between one brick and another, we'll use fresh snow to cement it all together, kind of like plaster. The final brick acts as a stopper and will be the most challenging to position, so we need to make sure to fit it in very well. After completing this task, we have to remember to carve an entrance door and also to dig a so-called cold pit in close proximity to it. This precaution will allow us to create a sort of natural siphon to channel the cold air that tends to descend downwards, thus preventing the warm air from escaping. And of course, let's absolutely not forget to make the small holes around the sides necessary for the proper exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. I already know of what you're asking yourselves right now. Is it possible to light a fire inside an igloo? The answer is yes. The fire will increase the temperature of the surroundings further and will not make the walls melt as the hot air from the fire rapidly cools upon contact with the ice, thereby preventing the bricks from melting. If we want to be even more precise, the heat of the fire actually melts the outermost part, creating, let's say, a more resistant layer of ice. Okay, now that we know how to build an igloo, we're ready for our journey to the North Pole. However, it's important to remember that in emergency situations, if possible, it's obviously always better to seek out a natural shelter, such as a cave or an ice quarry. Amazing friends, we'll meet again in the next video, always here on Geopop Everyday Science. Ciao!